memorial service of playwright Mbongeni Ngema, SABC News primetime anchor Bongiwe Zwane standing by for us. Very good afternoon to you once again, Bongiwe. What do you have for us? A very good afternoon to you again, Nzinga, and our viewers. So we continue to wait for the program to start inside here at the Durban Playhouse. We are um, anticipating the arrival of former President Jacob Zuma as well, and we'll bring you um, those visuals live as soon as they get underway. But as people arrive here in Nzinga, there are a number of them who are sharing different memories, different recollections, reflections of the late Mbongeni Gema. And one of them is Janak Parekh, who is going to be speaking to us as a friend and designer, someone who clothed um, the late playwright. Thank you so much for your time. You. And uh, let's start firstly with your reaction to his passing. It was a big shock. A shock in the sense just four days before his passing away, I was to introduce him to a local author, an upcoming author, and he did agree to meet. But unfortunately, we could not, uh, that meeting did not materialize. And I feel very, very sorry, uh, very... Uh, lost. As someone who dressed him, what was his style? What did he always ask you for? <laughs> he would come very often for uh, outfits, for suits, but every time he would come up uh, with different patterns and different designs. And quite often or uh, many a times he would leave the pattern or the designing on me and he would just come and say make me something different. That's all. And he was always happy with the uh, the job that was it. Tell me some secrets. Was he fussy? <laughs> uh, not really. No, no, no. But something about uh, Mr. Bangani and Gamma today I would like to highlight is as much as he is known of, um, as a man of controversy or a man with uh, different uh, talents or different passage, we people do remember that some years ago he had written a song against the Indian and the whole Indian community were uproar against him. And I remember even the late President Mandela had requested him to apologize, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Soon after that, he had, I had come up with a uh, project of a social cohesion involving the Indian community and the local uh, Zulu. And it was Mr. Bungani Engema who was the first one to send me a letter in a writing that he would like to, he requested me to accept him in my proposal or in my event and that he would like to capture the event in his uh, film and to make a film out of it. And that was the humble. Uh, that's what many people don't know. So what is said in the media that he is a man of different facets. Yes, it is true. He was, I agree, what he wrote against Indian was not good. But at the same time, he was also ready to reconcile. And uh, um, I, I was going to ask you about that song uh, and, and the, 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 the community, uh, you know, not receptive, the Indian community that is. Do you think after that uh, cohesion part of it, was he able or were you able to achieve the unity that you were now calling for and, and, and really calling for people to, you know, really unite after that song? Because there was quite a lot of people who were upset about that song. Uh, I agree. Soon after that, I had suggested him to get uh, to get the national anthem recorded uh, by all the freedom fighters, including President Mandela singing the first line, and then get other freedom fighters to sing the following line. There it was, Mr. Bongani and Gamma. He had suggested let the first line be sung by President Mandela, and the rest by the Indian freedom fighters like Ahmad Katrada, Ismail Peer, and many others. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Nzinga, if you can allow me, I've just spotted <laughs> a number of people coming in and uh, the, the joy of being live on camera. People can't say no to you. I'm going to start. Thank you so much to both of you um, for, for, for coming through. Premier, I'm going to start with you, then the MEC. Let's talk about the significance of this moment today to reflect on this legend that was known across the, the globe. Indeed, it is a sad moment uh, for us, but also today it's a, it's a moment to reflect and celebrate um, the life well lived. Um, the artists uh, play a very huge uh, role in our lives in terms of shaping 
um, the lives of our communities and shaping the lives of our country as well. We know that uh, our country would not be where it is today if it was not for this industry having to highlight the plight of the poor people and the apartheid regime and all the atrocities. So it is important at this time that we really look back and say, are we really doing all as a community to support this industry? And how then do you, as the Premier, uh, ensure that this particular industry, especially uh, uh, this house, you know, the Durban Playhouse, it was significant to who he was. And a lot of young and upcoming artists passed these shows. They are hoping that this is not going to die now that he's gone. Oh, definitely. We do support um, uh, the Playhouse Company uh, financially, um, but also when we go out in our outreach, um, Playhouse Company is always part of our outreach, which is quite an exciting thing for us because the Playhouse is now able to reach far-flung areas of our province, um, while previously they were only concentrating in Durban. And that's for us, has been another achievement in terms of making sure that we and the, the talent um, that we have in and around the province. But also to un make people understand, particularly young people, that they can actually be artists that are you know, respected globally. But also creating jobs, creating, um, you know, um, uh, bringing about the tourists, um, uh, as, we, as you know that uh, this industry also plays a big role in terms of uh, our tourism and putting our country and our province on the map. Thank you so much, Premier. I know they're waiting for you inside. I'm going to let you go and take the MEC, uh, Sboniso Soduma. If you can come through this side, um, MEC, Chairperson of the ANC as well. Let's talk about um, this particular day, the reflections, even as talking about protest theatre, because South Africa still has a lot that it's battling right now. Thank you so much for affording us this opportunity. I'm sure a majority of us define him as a revolutionary, a giant and a colossus person. A caliph of note who has just played his role, wrote the creative history as well in our continent. And in, I think in an Africa at large, we all understand that what he meant to majority, we are told that he spent six months knocking on a daily basis in Gibson Kenter's house. It means that he was someone who was very resilient in character, someone who was very passionate with music, someone who knew his destination and he had to shape a lot of people. I'm sure we're only going to be told a single story of Shakespeare if Morgan Goma was not alive. He wrote was uh, Albert, the magic at 4am, the Serafinas of this world. We never thought that the musical would be written by an African in particular because we grew up thinking that only a Eurocentric thing would be larger, would be better. Fortunately, prove us wrong as a, an African, but we are also saying that he was more of a revolutionary because he spoke at length with the ANC, about the ANC, in the ANC trenches. He always told us that freedom is coming tomorrow, prophesy in the late 80s, just imagine, just an African rural boy who grew up at Nkrat telling that freedom is coming tomorrow. When it was dark, he was able just to resonate well with the spiritual realm of saying that something good is going to come out of our freedom, of our struggle. And it's quite interesting when you think about even how that song came about, you know, and, and even how the play came about when he talks about, you know, the time he spent with Mama Winnie Matigizela Mandela. Let's talk about, you know, th there's something as leaders you have mixed legacies. There's, there'll be people who remember you for different things. There are others who talk about the controversies. There are others who talk about the good. So let's talk about that mixed legacy that he leaves behind and how you, as the African National Congress, reflect on it. Being an iconic figure, it is not mutually exclusive that people are not going to say anything negative about your life. It's natural. He was a fallible man just like everyone. We are glad that at some point in time he spoke at length of his weaknesses as a man, which is very good for us. That even means that he was repenting on a regular basis. He was trying. He has already shaped a lot of... He was a role model for a lot of people, but you want to specifically focus more on the good deed that he did while he was still alive life and we want to apologize to those people to those families that he might have made them the wrong choice or the pivotal pattern that was not okay so it's part of life and i'm sure the family today and the anc and south africa is large is here to celebrate his well-lived life MSC, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for your time. I know they're waiting for you inside. Nzinga, those are some of the reflections here as we are continuing then to monitor um, developments here, waiting for the start of the memorial service inside. It's back to you, Nzinga. Thanks, Bongi. I'm sure we're going to see you very shortly.